Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the concept of isotopes. Okay, so some of the concepts that we've met so far, or, or even just a kind of a, a quick sort of like super quick recap. This is our structure of our atom. Okay, we've it's made up of three types of subatomic particles: protons, and neutrons, and electrons. That the center part of the atom we label we call the nucleus and inside the nucleus are our protons and neutrons our electrons are orbiting around the outside okay our protons have a positive charge neutrons are zero and electrons are negatively charged okay and we've also encountered the concepts of atomic number and mass number representing the number of protons and the number of protons plus neutrons in an atom and then recognizing that these are whole numbers okay so that's kind of some of the concepts that we're at so far but see then you look at the periodic table and you look in one of the boxes, say like you might have for this one. So the box that you'd have for carbon. So it's got an atomic number of six, it's got its symbol of C, it's got its name, and then it's got what we call its atomic mass. Okay, which is a relative number. Okay. Um, um, so, you know, because we can't actually just pick out one atom and weigh it, so that, that we have to compare it with other samples that we know. But, okay. But what we notice is that this number here is not a whole number. Okay, now we've just said that the concept of um, the mass number is that it's a whole number. So how can... You know, have we made a mistake? Why are we saying 12.01? Or even if we were a bit more specific, we'd say 12.011. I was like, well, we kind of kind of flubbed that. Surely there's there's something that, that's meaning there, but how, how could this possibly be? Okay. And so what we recognize is that sometimes carbon atoms aren't actually all as identical as we thought. Okay. So let's say we've got this carbon atom over here. It has six protons and we've determined that it has six neutrons. Okay, so it has a mass number of 12. But now what we also identify is that that's not the only type of carbon atom that we come across, that it's still carbon because it's got six protons inside it, but that every now and again, we get a carbon atom that's heavier than that. It has an extra neutron that, may, that adds mass to the nucleus. So it has a mass number of 13. And even more really, but still not nothing, we come across a different version of carbon. It's still all carbon, but it actually has eight neutrons inside it. And so it has a mass number of 14. Now, what we want to know is saying, okay, well, um, you know, so this is probably about around about 98% of the time, you know, this is maybe about 1% of the time, you know, in very round terms, and this is maybe like 0.001% of the time, or probably even less, okay? Um, these are very approximate, but just showing you that they're not equally likely, you know, if we were to go out and just pick out any random carbon atom that we encountered, we'd have a much higher chance of coming across one of these types of carbon atoms than one of these. But we still need to be able to identify what these things are. They're all carbon, so they're all carbon, but not the same. Okay, that is to say, not identical. We started off with the kind of premise that all that, that um, all atoms of the same element are essentially identical, but what we're recognizing here is that, that, that they're, they're identical in some respects, but not in others, and we need to try and account for that. And so what we do is that we actually give these substances uh, or these different versions of carbon a name and we call them isotopes of carbon. 
okay? And so then what we would say is that we would call one carbon 12, the next one carbon 13, and the final one carbon 14. So they all have different mass numbers, but they're the same element, okay? So we define isotopes with, you know, on that basis. So isotopes Okay, so isotopes are different versions of the same element. They have the same atomic number, that is the same number of protons, but different, a different number of neutrons. So that is a different mass number. And so what happens is that we get, okay, we get a mass number of 12, a mass number of 13, and a mass number of 14. Now surely it's, it seems logical to us to then say, okay, well, so the average mass of those things would be add them all up and divide them by three so we get an average mass of 13. Okay, that, that seems pretty normal to, to kind of expect that but, but what we need to do is do we need to reflect the reality of saying okay well if we pick out any typical carbon atom that's out there what's its mass going to be? Now we recognized before that most of the carbon that's out there is number 12. Okay, only a very small proportion is number 13 and an even tinier proportion is number 14. And we need to reflect that in our average. So what we end up doing is that we do what's called a weighted average. Okay, and so that we can then kind of account for um, the proportion of each of these things that's out there. Okay, and we're going to just do go a quick kind of demonstration of how that works. You don't need to be all that familiar. You don't need to, to really know how this works, but just to help explain. So let's say that number 12 has a, is 98% that and then number 13 is um, you know let's say it's 1.1% that and then you know there's there's more decimal places in that and then number 14 is um, 0.0001% that so you take you you multiply the number by its percentage and then you add all of those together okay and so then what you end up with we get a number of 12.011 as being our relative atomic mass of carbon and so what you see when you look at the periodic table and you see numbers that are mostly not whole numbers, we've gone through this process to look at, okay, well, what different isotopes or different versions are out there? How common are they? And then being able to kind of look at the, the relative amounts of each thing and, and weigh it all together or kind of compare it all together to get an average relative atomic mass, a weighted average. Okay, so we looked at this idea that different versions of the same um, element are out there and exist, so like carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. We've identified that these things, we call them isotopes. Iso is group, um, Greek for same, okay? And so we've said that they have the same atomic number, the same number of protons, and therefore are the same element, but they have different numbers of neutrons, which means they have a different mass number. And then what we've done is that then we've seen how we can combine the different mass numbers and the um, relative amount of each thing that's out there into an average, a, what we call a weighted average relative atomic mass, which is why we get numbers that are not whole numbers on our periodic table. All right. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.